Apple's WWDC 2021, we're expecting to see the latest iPadOS 15 announced with all its new features. However, when is iPadOS 15's release date for both the beta and the official update time? Today, I'm going to let you know when you're most likely to be able to get your hands on iPadOS 15 and what features to expect in Apple's latest update. So if you didn't know already, Apple's next WWDC event is on June 7th this year. Today I want to cover when you can get your hands on iPadOS 15 and what features to expect in the latest leaks and rumours that we've heard so far. Early test versions of the software have already leaked, giving us some idea of what to expect from the update. There are still hidden features and functions we don't know about iOS 15 or iPadOS 15, but they often include hundreds of tweaks and new features. Apple is said to be focusing on the performance and quality in iPadOS 15 due to the numerous bugs in iPadOS 14 and big changes that were inside it, but there's still plenty of changes that are in the works. So first of all, for the official finished release to all compatible iPads, based on the last 9 plus years of history, iPadOS 15 will be officially released in the fall of 2021, likely in mid-September, a few weeks before the iPads and iPhones will be revealed for this year. We are saying this date as, for example, in the last five years, starting with iOS 10, it came out on September 13th. Now, I say iOS 10 because it wasn't until iOS 13 that we got the split into iOS 13 and iPadOS 13. But anyway... Going back, iOS 11 then came out on the 19th September, iOS 12 on September 17th, iPadOS 13 on September 19th, and then finally iPadOS 14 on September 16th. So based on this information, it is likely that iPadOS 15 will be released on week commencing September 13th. However, for beta releases, it's a bit different. WWDC 2021 kicks off on June 7th and as previous mentioned and again like last year due to the pandemic it will be another entirely virtual event. Following the Monday June 7th event unveiling of iPadOS 15 the software will be provided to developers for testing purposes. If you have an Apple developers account, you'll be able to get iOS 15 on June 7th. However, to get that account, you do have to pay a $99 US fee to be able to do this. However, you can get a developer access from the likes of You Did Registrations, the site I am showing here, that allows you to get developers betas on day one for only $6.99 US per device using my web link and also that web link is in the description below. However, the first beta might be a bit buggy and a lot of us wait for a public beta of iOS 15, what is free and is available normally in July time. Now I do say July time, but sometimes the public beta does come out a little bit earlier. Now before I jump into the quick history of the last versions of iOS and iPadOS, remember again it wasn't until iOS 13 that we got the split to iPadOS 13. So in previous years, public beta again, starting with iOS 10, was on July 7th, then iOS 11 was on June 26th, then iOS 12 on June 25th, followed by iPadOS 13 on June 24th, and finally iPadOS 14 on July 9th. Last year in 2020, WWDC was in the latter half of June time, where this year is in the early half. When Apple does a WWDC in early June, we normally get an end June date for the public beta. So we're expecting to see iPadOS public beta on around June 21st this year. With all the betas, whether this be the developers or the public, Apple normally bring updated versions to their betas every week or bi-weekly until its release in September time. Normally the public beta is far more stable than the developer's beta, but I would still recommend to wait for quite a few of the beta versions to come out if you plan to use iPadOS 15 beta on your primary iPad. Now for features with software, 
Apple can be developing certain features all the way up to WWDC and then these features can be leaked beforehand. However, the difference between software and hardware is that at the last moment a piece of software can be yanked and we will never see it at the WWDC event as it could need some more work. So based on this we can only reveal what we know so far and what we can see into iPadOS 15 based on all the leaks that we have available but like I said some of these might be pulled at the last moment. Since iPadOS 14 was a big change update it is likely that iPadOS 15 will make fewer modifications and instead work on enhancements and performance but still will have a few other changes and features added to it. Apple in the past have done this on quite a few iOS versions in the past for example. So let's jump into leaks. So on April 22nd a report came from Bloomberg that mentioned that iOS 15 and iPad OS 15 will embrace upgrades to its notifications. This includes new privateness protections and also an up to date lock screen display. Customers will have the ability to set totally different notification preferences relying on their present location or activities that they are doing. So for example, if you're doing exercise, only exercise type of notifications will appear. Or say if you're working, many notifications will be put on silent apart from emails from people in your workplace and apps like FaceTime, MS Teams or Zoom will give you notifications. The same will be there for sleeping, for example. Apple's AI will learn what you're doing with your iPad and then basically set it into the right mode. You as the customers have the choice to set computerized replies for every state of affairs based on the report from Bloomberg. Apple also seems to be doing some modifications to iMessage as well, with it's an objective to be an actual WhatsApp competitor, although that will come later, the report has mentioned. Also, a March leak from the tech website Phone Arena said iOS 15 and iPadOS 15 may let you change extra default apps. In iPadOS 14, you've been able to change your, say, your Safari app and your Mail app to like a different browser like Chrome or electronic Mail app like, say, Outlook. And then iPadOS 14.5, for example, let you even change your default music player from Apple Music to the likes of, say, Spotify iPadOS 15 might let you make some extra customizations like this to more default apps. Phone Arena additionally predicts that iPad will make widgets interactive, similarly to what you get on Android right now. So for example, you might be able to turn on toggles on and off. So thinking about it, if you use say like the photo app, you might be able to, for example, swipe through your photos. Or let's say you've got a notes widget, you might be able to tick off tasks in that widget without opening up the notes app. We might also see extra widget dimension choices for the iPad. It is also looking likely that the iPad's home pages can have widgets on them wherever you want this time. Currently on iPad OS 14, you can only have widgets to the left side of the screen. This might be totally scrapped to have widgets wherever you want them. Along with this, it is also likely we'll be able to scale and change the control center for iPads as well. Then finally, another feature may include the ability for third-party theme packs in iPadOS 15, with full development packs available to developers in Xcode. There are ways around this in iOS 14, for example, at the moment, but this would be Apple bringing her own development pack to iPadOS 15. One last feature to mention, and it will be coming to iPadOS, but to be honest, it's not actually specific to iPadOS 15, is the ability to run some full feature Pro apps. So we're expecting this, especially with the launch of the new iPad Pro M1, that we should be able to get some iPad compatible versions of say Logic Pro or Final Cut Pro that can be ran on iPads. However, as mentioned, this won't be built into iPadOS 15, but more likely we can see an announcement of Pro apps that can run on it. Well guys, that is the latest news and rumors we know about iPadOS 15. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And at the same time, if you've enjoyed watching this video, please do press the like button. And if you want the latest Apple news, reviews and comparisons, please make sure to press subscribe and that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I'll see you soon.